What's up and welcome back. I'm John Stark from MacTheMovieGuy.com, your favorite blind film critic. And today, I'm going to talk about Silo, Season 2, Episode 2. This has audio description on Apple+. Plus. This is just sort of just like a recap, my vibes type thing. Uh, there are people who do longer things, longer recaps. You'll find them. I love how people, there was like one guy who name checked me and was like, you you know, your videos are too, are too long. And I was like, there are much longer videos and podcasts. I love watching podcasts that are like longer than the actual episode they're recapping. Those are hilarious, you know? And then people are like, your 15 to 20 minute videos are too, and it's like, there's one that's like an hour and 15 minutes for a 45, you know what I'm saying? Like, huh? Who's listening to something that's longer than the episode in which you're talking about? Anyway, um, so just a couple of key points. One of the things, the biggest, like, I was sitting here, I was like, I don't know, do I want to jump into recapping this every week? But I have to say, what fucking great timing. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, this is the weekend of Wicked, and they've got an episode of Silo that heavily references uh, The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> While it does not benefit Apple at all, what a great weekend to do that. You know, like what a what a nice little tie-in. I'm sure Universal was like, thank you, Apple. We love you. Thanks for the shout out. So the judge, uh, who um we we know her position is basically kind of like bullshit and that Tim Robbins runs the place, but he doesn't really want everybody to know he runs the place. Um so the judge is sort of this, like, fake figurehead. So she directly references, she has the Wizard of Oz book. And she holds it up and she says, you know, he's asking her for help. And she's like, in this book, there's this wizard. And and then, the, you know, everybody thinks he's great and powerful. But then they look behind the curtain and they realize that he has no power at all. And at the end of the book, he gets in a balloon and he flies away. She's like, can you do that for me? Because if you could do that for me, then I'll help you. But if you can't do that for me, then the answer is no. You know, and I guess he promised it to her because um, he, uh, she ended up going out for his like bullshit statement, you know, so it looked like there was like a joint force in, in power and then everybody was like, oh my God, the judge, I can't even remember the last time we saw her. So, uh, which leads to the statement about how that they're trying to do a cover up. I'm, this is like the end of the episode, basically. I've, I've ad, done this ass backwards. But it's the whole reason why, if you're wondering, like, why did you keep, because uh, I, I didn't know. First episode didn't get necessarily a ton of views. But like the Wizard of Oz thing, just really, I was like, man, on the same weekend, that is timing. Did Apple plan that? Did Apple know? <laughs> Do they really go into this deep detail when they're scheduling, like, when their shows drop? And they're like, but if we drop it, then there will be this Wizard of Oz reference in Silo the same time Wicked is coming out. <laughs> um, he, so she goes out for the speech, and he says that they've invented this new kind of tape. And that was why uh, Juliet was able to survive longer, because basically they're saying that, you know... Uh, she's dead. He's he's telling everybody she's dead, but that she just made it longer. So she was able to go over the hill, but then she died like over the hill. But we saw that he saw the, the camera footage and over the hill is like a valley of dead bodies. And uh, he was able to see her go into the next silo and then fall down. And uh, he opens his book and the, the, the guy says, in, in case of a failed cleaning, prepare for war. And, uh, so, like, the sirens go off and everything. I love that that is the, it's like, really? You're not even going to explain it? You're just going <laughs> to, in case of a failed cleaning, prepare for war? What? <laughs> what if somebody just goes outside and trips and falls <laughs> and they don't clean? <laughs> there has to be, like, levels um, I love Silo, but I did think that was silly. In case of a failed cleaning, how about in case of, I don't know, go further than that. Like, in case of a 
person figuring out how to survive, you know, in case somebody like walks off, you know, because I was thinking there's so many other ways. Like, yeah, people may not actually go out and clean, but if the air really is toxic, they could go out there and stand there for too long, run out of oxygen, just die before they turn around and clean the camera. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, there's a whole host of things that could happen that don't lead to an actual cleaning, you know, um, but very weird. Anyway, <sighs> so uh, he's aware that she's in the next silo, except for the fact that her camera cuts out at the moment that she fell. So he doesn't know. He actually doesn't know if she's alive because she may not. I guess he could, he's probably assuming she is, but she also could have died at the end of that fall or injured herself in such a way where she can't really get up or move and will eventually die, you know? Who knows? Broke a leg. She's fucked, you know? Um, but, yeah, I really like the Wizard of Oz reference. And then at the end of the episode, the judge goes, I want to go out. She says it. You know, she's building her own balloon out of there. So I'm really interested to see where episode three goes because what a precedent for the judge. Is he going to let that stand? Is he, you know, I mean, really, I think he's the only one that heard it. So is he going to actually let her go out? Or is he just kind of like lock her in a room? You know what I'm saying? Like, is it he who, you know, really interested in this power struggle now because she's put him in an impossible position and she could just say it louder in front of other people uh until the point where it's like you know what do you do so um meanwhile common seems to be uh, uh, asking more important questions about like why you know why he knows some things and not some other things and will he ever actually get the job that tim robbins seems to be hinting at that he's going to get um, although he still is basically doing a lot of lying, um, Hank is being a, you know, has taken over as sheriff and is, I don't know, being a usual sort of like, um, quasi bad guy. There's some stuff that's happening down where Juliet was about, you know, where there are factions starting to split. There's a sense that there may be sort of like a an up, uprising at some point that they're trying to like quell. Um, and they take Walker and the other girl and put them in jail for a little while. So some other interesting things happen in this episode. But Juliet's not, to, not in this episode at all, but she's felt throughout the entire episode because everybody's always like referencing her and they saw what she did. And basically this is the answer to episode one is like, well, what was happening after she went out? Like what happened in the silo we were familiar with? And we get to see that. So the thing that I found the most fascinating was the dynamic with the judge and uh, the Wizard of Oz reference and her wanting this balloon to fly away. In. And now the cliffhanger, I'm intrigued to know what happens next, which is good because that's what it's supposed to be. Um, Tim Robbins running around like he's losing his mind because he's in charge. And obviously he's been in charge with, you know, with an iron grip this whole time, but that, that grip is losing because the book, which, because they've been in the silo for longer than Tim Robbins has been alive, obviously. So uh, eventually I'd love to get a flashback for his character and like how his character rose into this position. I think that would be a great episode to see, you know, especially how you grow up as a kid and then you eventually inherit this position where you're kind of in control of everything. You get to see how everything works. Um, I think his story is uniquely compelling in that manner because he didn't know how necessarily he didn't get to experience the world before the silo. He doesn't have all of the information. And then he opens this book and it just says, prepare for war. And he's like, well, what do I do with that? You know, <laughs> I love that. That's just like, <laughs> could have just said in case of failed cleaning, shoot self in head, you know, <laughs> like, thanks. That's helpful. Like, I mean, I just find that so amusing uh, that it's like, it just immediately goes to like code red. Like there, there aren't levels of, you know, well, what kind of failed cleaning was it? Did they, did they trip and fall? Are they still visible on camera? Did they die? You know, like what, 
like did everybody just see them go out there was it maybe somebody who's like really elderly and like the whole thing was a lot for them anyway and they just wanted to die outside you know i mean like there's so many situations and it's just like prepare for war <laughs> okay um anyway uh so I love Silo, and I love talking about Silo, and yes, there are better recappers than me, but hopefully none that seem quite as entertained and passionate about the show, and are blind, and the audio description, and I love the, how the audio description pointed out the tags that were on the wall for Juliet, uh, letting people know that there's maybe this uprising that is coming our way, uh, the little reference, obviously, to the, the Wizard of Oz book, uh, the fact that she had an analog clock. Uh, I really like that. It was a nice little reference. So um, little moments throughout that they threw in there that really worked for me in terms of audio description. So yeah, it's a good episode. Uh, I love Silo. I'm going to give Silo an A. I think, again, this sort of answer to me. And while I find it humorous, like uh, it is it is kind of funny, but it, it's one of those things where it's like it could easily be experienced at, at, through backstory. So I think if we explore Tim Robbins and we see sort of like, and we or if we see, you know, who came before him and like why it says prepare for war, I think stuff like that can be really interesting to explore as Silo progresses as a show through seasons, you know, three, four, five, however many times they're able to do this. So um, I do hope at some point we explore it because I especially think doing an episode on Tim Robbins' backstory would be interesting as to how you go from growing up in the silo as like the only thing that you know and then running it as sort of somebody who knows supposedly knows how the world works but you don't really because it's just this book and the book kind of tells you dumb things to do sometimes <laughs> so anyway that's it thanks for watching thanks for subscribing and i'll see you guys on the other side